got to go see Detective Pikachu. I know. I feel bad that this isn't our Detective Pikachu podcast. By the way, everybody, we're the Ungodly Geeks. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm, I'm Luke. Joe. We do things. We talk about shit. Yeah. I was going to... That was my thing, like, planning on doing Friday morning, because, again, like I said, I forgot about the recording anyway. And then I, mean, I worked yeah. until fucking almost 6 o'clock. It's been a, it's been an interesting transition for me going from nights to days. Yeah. And even though I've had two weeks now and six days off since I've done it, um, I've still not gotten quite used to it. Mm-hmm. So I'm still pretty tired uh, at times. So I'm just kind of sitting here like, oh, shit, what do I do? I got to do things. I'm going to do things this weekend. And I've like- got three days off. And then I sit on my ass for the entire time. Yeah. And I forget that, oh, I probably should like, wipe all the grease off of my... A kitchen counter mm-hmm. or i should probably like throw shit away that i don't need because i got to clean this closet out over here in the studio because it's just full of boxes and shit we have never used <laughs> um just junk yeah just junk i gotta start cleaning like my foot locker out in my bedroom because there's mm-hmm. a bunch of shit in there that i've had for years and i was looking at it yesterday or a couple days ago when i was looking for my birth certificate and it's like i cannot justify owning any of this shit why do i have it there's like six things in the thing. I'm like, oh, I can keep that. The rest of this needs to get burned. So, because the stuff I just ha- I've had for years, mm. some of it's like, why do I have a fl- a, a one gig flash drive from 1998? Yeah, you know, like why? What? Where did I even get it? I don't know. It's, just, it's still just just garbage. I spent must have been like obviously not in a in a row or all at one time. I. Um, recently because I hooked up my Vive and everything, uh, I had to unplug one of my, my second monitor, Mm -hmm. um, from that, uh, the extra HDMI port. And so I was like, oh, I'll just go grab my DP cable because all the monitors, my three triple monitor setup came with DP cables and I have those inputs still open. For anyone wondering, DP does not mean double penetration. It means display port. (laughs) Yeah. In this particular context. But I like calling them DP. (laughs) It also doesn't mean Deadpool, although we will accept that. Because Deadpool I, and Cable, I, it I makes like, sense. I think they're <laughs> double penetration cables, but anyway. So, I mean, okay, technically they are doubly penetrating things. Yeah. One end goes into one, one thing, one end goes one into the other. One end goes into the other. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> but ass to ass. But <laughs> ass to ass. Hey, I've seen it. Oh, man. That, that's, that's a great. thing. Uh, that's a horrible, horrible movie. <laughs> but, um,. So I am like, I know I have three of these cables and I have one, I finally organized all my computer shit into like one of those little standing carts that has drawers. And I got one drawer for cables that are all tied, all nice and neat. And I'm like, okay, got to be in there, right? No. Look in the other drawers. Look at all, I fucking tore my room apart. Cannot, now it's more messy because of this. Could not find a single one of those fucking cables. No idea where they were. So I went and just ended up finding... Plot twist. Luke's been using them the whole time. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Um, e- sort of. So finally, I was like, all right, I'm just going to plug it into the HDMI on the uh, onboard. Right. Because uh, I just want to use it, so it doesn't really matter that much. It doesn't have to be plugged into my graphics card. So I finally just do that, plug it in. It's working and everything. I go and I moved one of my other monitors to... Um, find uh, just find something else right, later right. on. Cable is still connected to the monitor. <laughs> the old monitor? Two of them, yeah. The, the, ones two, the two monitors I'm not using, yeah. So that's where two of the cables are. I don't know where the other one is. But I was like, God, motherfucker. <laughs> I had been like, I, I'm really glad I couldn't find one at work the other day or I would have bought one. <laughs> you know, I think that's one thing we're lacking at work is display port. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't even know if we had a spot for them. I mean, being honest with you, DisplayPort is as good as or better than most HDMI implementations, and it's free, like it's royalty free. Whereas mm-hmm. HDMI, I think you have to pay anywhere from four to eighteen dollars per HDMI port you throw on your TV, which is why you'll oftentimes see a lot of TVs that are really, really big with 4K resolutions and all that, two HDMI ports. Yeah, that's one of those cost saving measures that they do. Besides just mining the fuck out of all your data on their smart TV platform and selling it to partners. <laughs> but <clears throat> if you ever wondered why that uh, that Roku TV is 4K and 55 inches and only runs 300 bucks, well, that's oh, because they're go. selling your data, which I guess shouldn't really surprise anybody at this point. If um, they can figure out a way to mine data, 
They're they going will. to. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because data is valuable. You have crumbs in your beer. Well, save it um, for later. <laughs> yeah, I know, but... So I got to talk about this news of the stupid because this is this is really wholesome and weird. <laughs> I know, right? Like it's so rare that I it, love it when it's wholesome. Um, in Hamden, Ohio, which of course it just has to be Ohio, a lady broke. Pardon me. Snuck into a gut. Snuck into a home. Oh yeah. Pets dog and washes the dishes. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it it that's that's literally all it really is. You didn't take anything. Nobody got hurt. Um, but according to the people who reported the crime, she was really kind of acting very strangely. But she breaks in, she sits on the couch, she pets the family dog. Which, way the fucking go, family dog, not stopping an intruder. <laughs> That's a really great guard dog right there. Um, it's like, I, I don't really know what to say about this, but it happened on the 6th, so it's been five days now. Um, her mugshot, look at her in her mugshot, you're like... Yeah, that's I can, meth. That, I can, that's meth. That's yeah. meth. It's it's uh, Ohio. Uh, somebody <laughs> has to remind me to put the mugshot in the video. <laughs> Probably won't. You know, yeah, don't forget. I mean, you guys can just look up the news report. Um, I mean, it it, it afford of see is like heaves a sigh of relief that it's not from them, but right at yeah, this time, not this time, yeah. But I mean, it's it's one of those things also that's that's so tiny and small that it's like, oh well, okay, that's weird and awful and i don't want that happening but yeah it has a happy ending she broke into somebody's house hopefully she didn't break the door or anything or window but according to the report (laughs) she just sauntered through the back door uninvited plopped down on the couch and started stroking the canine so she she just walks in sits down on the couch oh doggy pets the doggo and then goes and does the dishes i mean it's one of those things right that's (laughs) It's stereotypical, and it's that, you know, I'm so old. But, I mean, when I was a kid, we really didn't lock our doors and things um, where I lived. Yeah, I think when I was growing up, even in this, even in the neighborhood I was in, um, which actually wasn't bad when I was a kid, we really only locked the door when we went to bed at night. Yeah. Like, that was about the only time that door ever truly got locked. Mm-hmm. Um So, yeah, I mean, it is one of those things. And even though, statistically speaking, we're actually in one of the safest times we've ever been in the history of humanity. Yeah. It's still one of those things that just happens. You just lock your door now. Like I, I've made a fucking habit of it. When I walk into here, the first thing I do is lock my door. Yeah. So, I mean, not always, sometimes I forget to, but still. And then, you know, you remember there was that like eight or nine month period where somehow our lock got broke. And so we just never locked the door here. Yeah. So, and as far as I know, nobody ever came in or anything, but as soon as, um, as soon as Ron left, I immediately got that fixed. Yeah. So. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I mean, I'm kind of, I don't know when I started getting that kind of paranoid, but I am kind of paranoid like that. And actually, now that I think about it, my grandmother, we leave, a, like, some of them, some, if we're, I mean, we're in the house, but the side doors usually open. Mm-hmm. Um, so that just so the dog sits there in the sun. Right. She likes it. If that door's open, she'll sit there and just, like, bathe in the sun, in the sunshine <laughs> through the side. Baked doggo. Yep. Sun-kissed doggo. Yeah, but Sun. I mean, I'm the kind of person where, like, you, uh, I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't have to lock the door all the time, but right. I would prefer to have a gun in every room of my house within reach. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so if shit does hit the fan... <laughs> I'm ready. You're prepared. I'm prepared. Yeah. Like, reach under the toilet to the fucking Glock that's duct taped to the side. <laughs> you probably want to use Gorilla Tape. Duct tape is terrible. Yeah, Gorilla Tape <laughs> under the toilet. <laughs> then again, you just never get the damn gun off, rip it off. Part of the toilet goes with it and you fall. I mean, uh, that was one of my favorite... Fuck, we probably... Uh, it was the... Yeah, yeah, it was the first Punisher movie. Mm-hmm. Um... When he's when he gets attacked by the Russians, right in his apartment, and he's just pulling guns from places, <laughs> and then the Russian dude is like beating his ass. He slams on the table and pulls out that fucking hand cannon. Yeah, and the Russian dude hits it with a weight and just bends the barrel, and he looks at it like motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was something that was really good about that movie. I did love that. I, I there was there was a lot of good things in that movie. It wasn't it wasn't great. But right, right. <laughs> but then there were some fun moments. So, um, mm-hmm. all right. Uh, so I've been oh. playing uh, the shit out of 
Horizon Zero Dawn lately. Oh, yeah? Finally went and decided to pick up an older game that I've been putting off playing for, fuck it, I think it's like two years old now. I mean, that was that's one of those games where I've ever got the the uh, urge or whatever to suddenly buy. You know, I would buy a PS4. Yeah, it would be for that Bloodborne and got Data. If you ever got one cheap enough. I mean, I'm not worried about the cost. Yeah, I like. <laughs> I don't use my living room enough for that kind of purpose. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I don't even play my Switch on my TV much anymore, um, and I usually play games on my desktop now so yeah I'm, so i'm kind of back to that right now uh because that, that shifts every so often no, i feel and, that um, I'm, I'm kind of switched back where i don't touch pc games right now and i've right. been playing the ps4 a lot right so um for me it's like i'm still in that phase where i don't have a good enough excuse to buy one mm-hmm. because what would i do with it besides play a ps4 game you know mm-hmm. like i got my shield tv is capable of better 4k video playback than the ps4 would be so why would i yeah and you not buying physical blu-rays or no anything, i so. yeah i i almost thought about it though mm-hmm. um because i was at my local walmart which is not the walmart we work at mm-hmm. um what three you know thursday friday i don't know one of these days on my off days i don't know what i have in elf mm-hmm. anymore and um there was a double copy of john wick Ugh. in the steel case that came with two of the coins Ooh. and i was like it was like 15 bucks i'm like i want those coins yeah I, so I, honestly, I almost that would be very tempting i i sat there i stood there for like five minutes looking at this and i'm like i could buy this yeah and i would just carry one of the coins around you know mm-hmm. and um i ultimately decided against it but that would be a thing i i would probably do yeah like that's the kind of thing where i, I want to buy this i really do want to buy this but then i thought Aside from the coins, what would I really do with it? You mm-hmm. know, because like you said, I don't, I don't have any optical disc players, <laughs> readers at all in this house. I do not have a single computer with even just a CD drive. Mm-hmm. I don't have anything else. So to be like, aside from having the coins, which are admittedly really fucking cool, I have no reason. I have nothing. Yeah. So I mean, I could see I, if we sold like the coin collector coin in like a little box or something for 15 bucks probably drop the same i'm like yeah. oh hey and it could be the same fucking coin just repackaged yeah and i wouldn't even think not nope. even getting movies with it yeah but just yeah because those fucking gold coins are cool but for 15 dollars uh yeah and i'm i might go back and buy it <laughs> yeah I, i'm still thinking like i might come back for you i mean i don't i've, I've switched over and i you know, every, both my Xbox One and my PS4 both have multiple terabyte hard drives hooked up to them because I'm sick of discs. Mm-hmm. I fucking hate switching out discs, so every game I buy is just downloaded straight to that. And when you sit there and you have that setup, mm-hmm. um, that game companies seemingly are moving towards, where you buy a game and you put it in your system only to have to download 50 gigabytes of shit yeah. because nothing's on the disc besides a, 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 a file that says, yes, this person is eligible to play this game. Like, what, what's the point? And the thing that kills me is that they're still requiring you to have the disc in the console Yeah, when you buy the game like that, um, when there was nothing on the disc. That, that reminds me of something shitty that Square's doing. Um, if you don't order the Japanese edition of uh, Final Fantasy X and X2 HD Remake for the yeah. Switch, um, you like you buy the game here in the United States. Yeah. You get Final Fantasy X on the card. Final Fantasy X-2 is a separate download. Yeah. You can't play X-2 without X in the system. Oh, that's annoying. Right. Despite that being like a, DL- like a separate download, yeah. I guess it technically counts as DLC. You have to still have ten in the system. That's like, if, however, if you buy the Japanese version, you can import it because the Switch is region free. Yeah, and it has English and all that. Mm-hmm. You have both games on the cart. On the cart. That on the cart. Makes no goddamn sense. But yeah. whatever. Nintendo does some weird shit. No, that's Nintendo not even Nintendo. America. That's Square uh, making Square. that decision. Yeah. yeah, that's Square making that decision. Because I mean, you can get carts. Like they're obviously more expensive, but you can get Switch carts that are like thirty-two gigabytes that yeah. have enough space. And it's like I realize that. 
this memory is expensive to you guys in some degree because cartridges are more expensive than optical media. Yeah. But at the same time, I can go to my local Walmart or I can go it on Amazon or whatever and I can order a 64 gigabyte micro SD card that is a quarter of the size of the Switch cart. And I mean, they can obviously fit both on the cartridge. They right. did in right. the Japanese version. So there's no excuse Not really, that no. they didn't put them both on the cartridge. Yeah. That doesn't, so. that doesn't even make monetaries. I do like, though, that Nintendo's embracing digital even more. Apparently, they have a massive sale right now yes, yes, on um, digital uh, There's digital like games. 130 titles on mm-hmm. sale right now, and some of them were up to 90% off, yeah. which is insane for anybody. About normal for Steam, yeah. but that's insane for any major storefront like that, and it's even like more extreme for Nintendo because they rarely put stuff on sale. Their first-party stuff, yeah. Especially their first-party stuff, They've been doing yeah. a lot of great sales on indie stuff. Like... like when you see PS4 uh, and um, Xbox One, if you go to their shop and see their sales, and they'll do deal, like, they, oh, this is blah, blah, blah deal week. Like, Sony actually had a big one um, just recently when I bought Horizon right. uh, on just anime shit. It was like a weeb sale 2019. Uh, yeah, yeah, Nintendo did that recently, too. Yeah, so it was all, like, all the fucking Naruto games, all the Gosh. different... Um, Weeb games, <laughs> all the fucking and all I'm the waifu like, battle simulators. Yes, and stuff because like that. Yeah. Sony has some that nobody else has because yeah. you know, like they they just have tons of fucking dating sims. And but here's the thing, I and I have to bitch about this. I had forgotten about this. I was so fucking annoyed. I was looking for um like the Yakuza games, right? And games by those developers, which and are found, fantastic games. Yeah, Yakuza yeah. games are fun as hell. I need to get back and start playing that game. Uh, I found the Fist of the North Star uh, game by those developers and bought it, and it was only like uh, 20 bucks or even less, maybe. I don't yeah, remember. Right. Uh, because, hey, fuck it. It's on sale. Yeah. And for some reason, Star Wars Starfighter was on sale with this group as well. So I was like, fuck it. I bought it. That game did uh, not age well. Sony, I don't think that's an anime game. <laughs> but, yeah. But, um, Sony, normally I bitch and moan about Microsoft's menus and they are fucking terrible they are yep, um yep, yep. their ui I sony will never buy for this Xbox sale of it. for this sale had about i'd say 55 to 60 percent of the screen was one big fucking display thing and then only the bottom like 45 percent of the screen was where they were actually showing the titles so you could only get two rows of i think there were four or five right of like the little image and then the title name that you were scrolling through. And I'm talking hundreds of games on sale. So just scrolling through this and luckily I was just bored doing it just for the hell of it. Right, but I right. was like, if I was seriously going through here for a purpose, right. I would be ready to fucking murder someone because nine, like most of the screen is taking up, taken up by nothingness. Like, it was it's so it's being taken fucking up. stupid. It's I don't being, even I don't even remember if it was an ad. I think it was just their the fucking weeb sale twenty nineteen uh, robots and fucking big titty anime girls. And so was it was it. it was their banner. Is I think it was, it was a banner. Yeah. yeah, I don't even fucking remember now because I rage blocked it out. But <laughs> I was like, this is the dumb. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Like. At least, though, when you click on something and go back, it takes you back to where you were. Oh, or it God. will put you just, like, one or two away. It wasn't too bad. Microsoft's the one that when you go back, you never know if you're going to go back to where you were. Or they might just send you back to the fucking fir- front page of the store. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Microsoft's um, is so terrible. It's slow. Like, legitimately fucking lags through looking through titles on their storefront. Terrible. I haven't booted up my Xbox One in a fucking, like, long-ass time. Since I got to the point where Red Dead Redemption 2 is like, oh, this is where the story just gets ultimately depressing and doesn't stop being depressing. I'm going to take a break now. That's that's one thing where i got to give <laughs> Nintendo some credit. Despite their their system being underpowered, yeah. their eShop is actually decent. It's like, it's optimized it's to the great. point where you can visit the eShop while you're in a game. Yeah. So, like, that that's pretty nice, you yeah. know? Uh, because you can't launch anything else while you're in a game. But the eShop you can access. eShop works. Yeah. So it's like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So you can sit there, you can be playing Skyrim or, or you know, something, and decide, you know what, I'm going to go check out the eShop, see what's on there. Because I do that sometimes. Mm-hmm. Where I'm sitting there, you know, I'll be playing a game. It's like, 
Let's see what's on the eShop. Mm-hmm. Maybe I want something new. Maybe I want something old. I don't know. And then I go, oh, hey, I want that. And I'll buy it, and it'll start downloading, and I'll go back and play whatever game I'm playing. Yeah. Which I've been playing a little bit of Diablo 3 lately, in case anyone's curious. Yeah. Um, um, oh, but Horizon Zero Dawn. Was, yeah, Horizon. <laughs> um, I, I, this is back when every game protagonist used a bow and arrow. And I had forgotten, so I started playing, and I was like, oh, yeah. This is back when uh, that was, like, the most popular thing. Like, Tomb Raider had come out. Right. Like, Crisis came out in May, and you were using a bow most of the time. There were, like, a, a shitload of games. Everybody was fucking using bows. It was, it was that for some reason, that time. Yeah, but in this like is Cyber 20, 2016 or whatever. Well, not for your character. Your character's fucking a goddamn, um, like... Uh, tribal, basically. She's a free folk. Uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah. It's kind of, actually, uh, because <laughs> the last game I can remember playing where you were almost at this level of like, um, uh, basic, uh, un like non technologically advanced was Far Cry Primal, where you were <laughs> literally playing a caveman using a bow <laughs> and a spear. So. I don't know what the name of the tribe that this game's main character is from. Right. I know they're assholes, and then eventually they accept you, and it starts being okay. But so anytime I'm playing the game, and I'm talking about the tribe, and I go and I look at them, I just keep calling them Winja, <laughs> because I remember that from Far Cry Primal, because the main character, like, in in cutscenes, does not speak English. He'd be, like, grunting, and um, da, da, no, God, and he'd be, Winja! <laughs> So every time I'm running around and I'm talking to, like, my tribe, I'm like, Winja! <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's it's a fun-ass game. I guess you're not... You, you do have some cyber stuff. Like, you have arrows that fucking explode into ice and fire and shit. But it's... The whole point of the game is um, you hunt these fucking robot animal slash dinosaurs and right, right, uh yeah i mean it's 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 fucking i mean it's a blast it's kind of i'm trying to think of what it's similar to um as See, an I open world game it's kind of close to <clears throat> arc survival involved but done right um no more it's definitely more like a red dead or a grand theft auto type of open world okay um but it's it, it doesn't have it doesn't have like the random encounters that Red Dead Redemption does Red Dead Redemption 2 anyway I think that's something that really needs to be put into um, more open world games because that makes any time tra- you're traveling can turn into something way more interesting so traveling long distance in this game can kind of get a little boring however if I never play another open world game that um, has a stamina meter and a fucking hell, like a, a fucking eat food meter, I will be so happy mm. because this game is like a breath of fresh fucking air that I can just hold down the X button and the chick is just fucking trucking with no problem. No fucking running out of yeah, like stamina and standing there huffing and puffing but like Luke, Link, that's... or fucking drowning Luke. or falling off a cliff. That's more realistic though. Fuck the realism though. Oh my god, fuck realism. I just want to be able to book it, especially when there's a giant fucking metal rhinoceros chasing me, it... shooting flames out of its asshole. Like I get some people <laughs> wanting like that 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 level of realism. Yeah, but video games are not realism. Video I game. get it. Okay, you're a hunting giant robotic animals. Exactly. Where, where the fuck's the realism? You're doing it with a regular bow and arrow. It's not like you have fucking uh, Turox tech bow or something, you know? Yeah. I mean, eventually the bows do upgrade more and more and get, like, interesting. Like, you have, a, you have an arrow that does no damage, but when it hits, it locks onto a piece of the... Um, robots like armor or like they have weapons and stuff on the sides and it Lord then me. the arrow uh explodes and that whatever gets shattered off it's called a shadow arrow shatter arrow so i mean you do have some high tech right stuff. right but, but but she is still stabbing them with a fucking spear and shooting arrows so <laughs> you're you're hunting robot dinosaurs yes with primitive weapons yeah, i didn't i didn't even think about the turok comparison but yeah she's like a fucking badass uh, I like like, like 
Like, what do you expect? What are you What are you yeah. thinking here? It's it, it's like I get you know if you want to play a survival game, and that's fine. They, 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 you can even if they want to fucking add that as an option, go right ahead. But seriously, more of these open world games would be so much better by just letting you fucking sprint forever and not have to worry about any of that other bullshit. Right. That shit can go on to their survival crafting fuck you games, and they can keep that in those games. I don't want that shit. I want, if I'm going to have a story-driven open world, you know, adventure slash fucking hunt down dinosaurs, metal dinosaurs kind of game, just let me run for 90 miles straight. Wow. It's also got a mechanic that I didn't even know about when I uh, first got the game. Right. That you can take over the um, robots. Right. Uh, the machines. And so some of them, like, there's horse and cow looking ones that you can actually ride and ride them around. So it's like, oh, hey, cool. This is fucking Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> I'm riding a metal horse. Wow, man. I'm sitting here just. I'm reading the story on Pro Jared. Oh, man. Pro Jared. And uh, I'm going to... Uh, that drama. He deserves every bit of shit he's getting. Like, I, okay, so at first I heard... So the first thing I heard was him and his wife are getting a divorce. Right. And then is that he's been cheating on her with some other guy's wife for, like, an extended period of time. We're talking, like, years. Right. And then now it's come out that he's also, like... Um, apparently, for years, he's been soliciting... Like years, uh -huh. years upon years, for basically a while, he's been soliciting nude photos from fans. Yeah. Um, O'Farrell, his wife, well, soon to be ex wife, um, yeah. says that, you know, apparently he's been requesting nudes for f from years, and it started off as a joke on Tumblr and eventually turned into an abuse of power for him to intentionally <laughs> manipulate anyone to show them. Show him their naked body on the basis that he's a popular internet man. <laughs> Which is like, I mean, yeah. I'm popular on the internet. Show me your tits. Oh, no, not just tits. Yeah, oh, well, I know. That's, um, that's the joke. It's not just tits. Like, apparently, one of the people who were sending him news was a male. <laughs> and was 16. Oh, no. Uh-huh. Um, so this takes another turn. Yeah. Apparently, one of the things he had been doing for, for years was sending unsolicited, sexually explicit photos of him on Snapchat. Or he would send risque photos unprompted. And it's like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? Why? Why are you doing this? Why is it that when people get this fame... Even this little tiny bit of fame that he has, because yeah. he only has a million subscribers on YouTube, so it's not like he's a huge personality or anything. He's just some goofy-looking, ugly fuck who sits there and, like, why? Why? Why it's, are you doing this? It's something where... Like, like, why is it when you get these little tiny bits of power like this, people abuse them? Yeah. Is I, I mean, okay, power corrupts. I get that, but it's like... Really? I think these people were, they had that in, like, in them before. Right. Like, they, it's just now they have a place to put it. <laughs> like and like like they have they have power now and yeah. then they they just it's just one more step for them. I mean, it's just why? It's just why? I don't get it. Like it it's one of those things that just it frustrates me as just not even as a man, just as a human being. Like, yeah. why would you be this shitty? You know, and I think you're right. I think there's just people who are just broken, and he's one of those people who are just broken. He has to be. Um. He's like we were just talking about that other asshole, who Austin Jones. Austin, that's who it. was. Uh, yeah, he was sentenced to ten years in prison for soliciting sexually explicit photos and videos from underage fans. Yep, and he was even gross. He he was even more gross in my opinion because he was making sure that the fans who sat there and talked were to underage. Him, well, no, he he yeah, he made sure they mentioned it in the videos. That's the fucking the the like. It's already disturbing enough that you wanted this that you wanted to make sure you got underage um, girls to send you nude pics. And then to go that extra mile and be like, okay, now I want you to tell me and say in the video. And like, if you, the chat logs are even crazier. Mm -hmm. He's like, hey, wouldn't it be funny if you like pull the thong to the side so I could see your asshole? Yeah. And he's like, oh no, you got to pull it all the way so I could see it. Haha. -ha. Yeah. That'd be so like just this fucking creepy as shit. And then he'd be like teaching them to twerk and 
telling them to say their name and that they're 14 and they're his girl and it's her, his body. Like, to take it to that level, it's like, you fucking sick monster. And I think even the, even the judge said that um, he, the, the guy, Austin, tried to get a lowered sentence because I guess he was abused somehow. When yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, it was, and the judge, they said, made that, they made that plea. His yeah. lawyer made that plea because his dad abused him or whatever. When yeah. he was a kid, it's like, you it's know terrible. what, man, I get that. That's terrible. That's awful. Yeah. That's not an excuse. No, there is the no judge even for said for anyone who's had that abuse, you should be the first one to under like to not, you know, to understand right. how horrible it is to put this on all these people. And in, in taking into account how many, uh, just to like, what was it? It was 30, 40, I don't know, remember how many people he had solicited it, of I these mean, girls. At this point, it was the a fact that, shitload. The fact that he did it with a 14, 15 year old was like. Yeah, multiples. Yeah, it's like. Uh, and like, all dude. on Facebook. And the judge was like, no, taking that into account, there's no, there's no reducing your sentence. Yeah. You just go directly yeah. to jail, do not pass, go, fuck off. Uh, just get. But raped in jail. Get fucked. Like, um, because that's basically what you're, what you're about to have Probably. happen. Unless it's, he's in solitary. It's just, it's gross. It's really fucking gross, just, you know. And it's frustrating, you know, because I mean, we're trying to break into that space, maybe little by little, and now we have, we have people who have been at the top who are doing this kind of thing. Yeah. It's like, no, why? You're just making it harder for the rest of us, you know. Like and, and we've had so many things that have come out like this over. I was like, mm-hmm. can we just can we just be decent people? Like, is that seriously such a difficult thing? Yeah, I say some really awful shit, but I'm st- at the end of the day, I'm still a decent person. Mm-hmm. You know, at the end of the day, you know, we're not cheating on our spouses. We're not soliciting photos and shit from underage women. Hell, I don't even solicit photos from normal age women. You know, <laughs> like like except we're not asking for nudes from anybody. I'm really not. People just send them to me. It yeah. happens. It's like I I don't understand like why this is a thing. You know, like <sighs> there's just some fucked up people. Like like apparently according to a, a series of tweets um, that O'Farrell sent out, uh, the Tumblr that was in question was a body positive space for consenting adults. And she approved on that basis because that's a good thing, right? You know, just have that... The who, what now? His, the Tumblr that was started, that he started. I said that in the thing where oh. he, he started a Tumblr for nudes. Oh, um, and I didn't hear that. Yeah. Who was this? Austin or uh, Pro Jared? No, no, Pro Jared. We're not okay. talking... I don't care if give a fuck about well, that asshole. Um, <laughs> jumping back and forth. Yeah, we do that. You know, I'm, I'm tired. I'm just... I'm tired. Um, <laughs> Forgive me. I sometimes lag a little behind after work. She didn't even know that he had started the Snapchat. She found out from a fan comment, and she uh, felt uncomfortable, um, and but felt pressure to allow it. She mm-hmm. believed he had shut it down in late 2017, but now she has reason to believe it continued for a while. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't stop. You know. Uh, I mean, it, it got shut down recently because Tumblr just had news, but. Well, we're talking about the Snapchat too, though. So um, she was talking. I. Uh, it's just, it's a lot of a lot of just dumb, dumb, dumb shit, and it's like you look at this guy, and like I always felt something was off about him because I've watched reviews he's done. And I've watched the I've watched videos of his, and you sit there and you look at him. You know, you just feel something's off about him. Like he made me feel uncomfortable because you look at the guy, he looks like he's an alien or maybe <laughs> on meth or maybe both. And now it's like, Oh, well now I see why I've always, I was always slightly uncomfortable watching him. Mm-hmm. And that would be why. Cause I never, I never was a fan of his. He's been on the platform for years, but I never cared to subscribe to him. I watched, like I said, I've watched a handful of his videos over the years. He did a, uh, a review of Final Fantasy VII that I mostly agreed with. Whatever. Mm-hmm. I, it's, it's just... Why? Why was this a thing? Of all the shitty, shitty things you could go to. Like, I don't know. I, I would be more forgiving if I found out he was cutting people's heads off for the Cali cartel or something, you know? <laughs> like, I, I'd be like... Oh, well, okay, I understand that. They're not somebody you fuck with, right? But Yeah, no, you don't fuck with the cartel. But no, he's sitting there and soliciting nudes and shit from, from fans and sending his dick out to people, which, by the way, I am proud to say that so far I am part of the club that has not seen Pro Jared's dick. 
Yeah, no, I was uh, on the official podcast. They were talking about this and talking about it. Stick apparently he's got a slog. <laughs> but oh man, it's just why? You know, like just just why? Why does this have to be a thing? Oh, Luke's grandma is calling him. Um, I don't know. Hit the volume button so it silences. There we go. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm, I, I just get really frustrated when I see this kind of shit. It's one of those things. Like this is not virtue signaling. This is me being legitimately angry that we're in this kind of age where things are are shifting and we're being less shitty, and it's continuing to not only be a thing, it's continuing to be a thing that gets big. That that. And that's good that we're paying attention to it. It was good that we're shining that spotlight on it. But maybe it's one of those things where I'm just so tired of seeing it that I want it all to go away. You know, with the Me Too movement, which obviously I approve of and stuff like that. It's one of those things where I'm just, I'm so tired of being indonated with all of this stuff at once at all times. And I just want it all to stop. And I will always be very, very angry when this kind of stuff comes out. Yeah, And I gotta be honest with you, I kinda wanna take this little baseball bat that holds my window closed and just beat the fuck out of him with it. Cause like, what is wrong with you? So, let's uh, go move on to something we can kinda laugh at. <laughs> um, in a movie theater in, uh, oh, where'd this, where'd this happen? It doesn't even tell me where. Uh, in Montreal, a, uh, a movie theater in Montreal started playing a The Curse of La Llorona. I'm actually not entirely sure how to pronounce that. Which is a really creepy horror flick instead of Detective Pikachu. <laughs> um, they Still sat there. That. Yeah, they they um, they were sitting there. Everyone come in to see the movie. Because, you know, we, we want to see Detective Pikachu, too. Because, I mean, it's Ryan Reynolds as Pikachu. Why would you not want to see that? Yeah. Um, it, oh, pardon me. Uh, they sat there and they, they played that movie instead of <laughs> hundreds of children, hundreds of children. Way. Yeah. Like, not like Jesus Christ. How big it wasn't like 10 or six kids. Like, yeah. so, you know, it was like, this was an entire theater of children <laughs> and they started so playing great. this creepy ass, uh, movie. It's this fucking terrifying horror movie. Apparently the movie's shit, so it's got a 30% of Rotten Tomatoes. What, Detective Pikachu? Or no, La Llorona. Oh, okay. I mean, I don't give a shit about that, you know? I know, but I just, I wanted to look it up to see, like, <laughs> anything about it. And there's an, Im- an image, uh, the the gamer, um, <laughs> for their head uh <laughs> Oh, you guys want to know that... Um, has a picture of crying Pikachu in front of this, like, evil zombie face. You guys want to know, uh, apparently the movie opens with a, a scene of a mother drowning her child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, yes. That's... Hello, we're going to see Detective Pikachu movie, Mommy. And then yeah. it cuts to a movie of a mother just drowning. Just drowning. Her... So, hold you down till the bubbles stop. Yeah, so... <laughs> Oh, man. You shitty kids never stop talking about Pokemon. I mean, one of the amazing things, though, is that, like, the movie opened with trailers. Because obviously, they all show trailers before movies. Yeah. And uh, it was stuff like um, Annabelle Comes Home and The Joker and Child, the Child's Play remake. Should have given them a bit of a... Yeah, it should have been like, wait a minute. This isn't exactly child-friendly. Mm-hmm. So it's like maybe maybe something's wrong here. Nobody caught it until the scene where the, where the mother is drowning their child. So congratulations, movie theater in the, Montreal. I bet, I bet the um, dude, the uh, projectionist, was up there getting laid, not paying any attention, getting a blowjob. <laughs> and wait a minute, shit, 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 shit. Uh, oh shit! Oh fuck! The Gozo Marche Central in Montreal um, was where this happened, and it's just, it's oh my. Like this, this is something I can laugh at. I'm sure they apologized. It's it's an awful thing. It's an awful, awful thing because these kids are traumatized in a sense now. (laughs) But it's funny to me that that, you know they'll get over it. It it was just yeah. I mean, it was a it was an honest. Well, maybe not an honest mistake. It was a mistake. Somebody fucked up somewhere. Like I don't know how do you start showing one movie like that, you know, versus another. But hey, 
We got um speaking of movies, John Wick three comes out like next week, I think. Yes, it does. Yes, yeah. it does. We're gonna have to do a John Wick. Do- uh, well, we're gonna have to go see Detective Pikachu. So yeah, it comes out on the seventeenth. Yeah, we'll have to see that. And we'll do a double feature. Both of them, something. We'll do a double feature. Mm, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, maybe. Let's see if there's like. Depends on how tired I feel. Yeah. Although I think if I see Detective Pikachu when I see it, I'm thinking I'm gonna go like in the morning on a weekday. Right. So that there's no fucking kids. <laughs> yeah. But then again, there might be even younger kids that aren't in school yet. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I don't we'll know. see what happens. Let um, me see the double Pikachu event. They're doing the Detective Pikachu event in Pokemon Go right now. Yeah. Double experience points for catching mons. Um, and you're getting a lot of mons that are spawning. I actually caught, um, you know, the the fucking thing that evolves into Rampardos. The dinosaur with the dome. Oh, yeah, yeah, head yeah. Budget. I finally caught one of those last night. Nice. Um, I just, uh, I was sitting there in my bedroom and something, something, uh, bade me to open Pokemon Go and I did and I was sitting right there. I'm like, yes, I finally got the thing. I, uh, still haven't caught a shiny monkey fuck thing with a hand, with the extra hand on its tail. Dude, my, my, uh, my gotcha caught like 40 of those things when I was on my walk home from work. Uh, that night that I was yeah. here until like I was there until like three o'clock in the morning. No shinies. Nothing. Um, but I did just before coming in here catch a shiny cubo. Oh, there you go. Because I've had two of those already. Now the third one. I was like, it's. I mean, cool. You're shiny, but why couldn't the fucking ape thing be shiny? I just got. <laughs> that's kind of mess. Terrible. It's terrible. You know, it's it's kind of sad that that's what the game has basically dropped to. Yeah. Is like just catch shinies. shiny hunting. Yeah. Um, what, I mean, the game, not that the game ever had a lot to it, but I don't know. I feel like they could, they could do more. I mean, we had like a little group for a half a second that was like, Hey, we're going to start doing raids and stuff. And then we did two and then never again. We did two and I failed to catch the Pokemon both times. Yeah. Sucked. I'm, I'm still kind of bitter about that, but I got, I got them on. I got the Actually. ho so I'm good. Um, I've, I've managed to fucking get six of them for research tags. And I traded you, what, an Articuno for one? Yeah. So, because I caught like three Articuno. Um, I, oh, I did my I research this Lad- Ladios or Ladios. whatever. Ladios, yeah. I was like, yes, I, I get my research did the thing. Tonight or tomorrow night? Yeah. Hopefully I get one of those. Which one is of those sh- uh, special. Sh- which is great because, you know, I completely missed the raids. Mm-hmm. Um, because A, you know, the, the aforementioned raiding group just doesn't, doesn't exist, exist anymore. And, uh, B, I just didn't care. Yeah. I, I have time now, right? Like I have time You're to- You're off during the day. Yeah. I, I have time to legitimately play the game, mm-hmm. but it's hot out. Yeah. <laughs> like it's hot out and there's sun and there's people and I don't want to deal with any of that. <laughs> <laughs> the sun, this horrible ball of fire that gives you cancer. And if it's not out, you're sad. Yeah, it's kind of weird, isn't it? Oh, um, man. You know, it, it's interesting because um, I don't have vitamin D deficiency, like, at all. Mm-hmm. Like, I've never had that as a thing, even for the last seven years of me being, like, a, a, a night shift person. It takes a lot to actually get that deficiency. So, it's like, like, yeah, like, you need about 15 minutes a day of mm-hmm. exposure to the sun to keep a normal level. And you don't even need actual exposure to the sun, right? Like you, just, oh. it, it can be behind this really thick cloud cover, and you're fine. And so I, I sit there and I wonder, like the people who have gotten it, why not just open your fucking curtains for like half an hour a day and catch up with the rest of us? You know, exactly. Like I know it's hard, it sucks. I'm fucking totally fucking there. minutes. Just you need 15 minutes of exposure. It doesn't even have to be direct exposure. No. Just open your fucking curtains and sit there. At least part them a little bit and stand in front of them. Like yeah. glare out the window. <laughs> like, but yeah, glare out the window at the kids playing in your yard, which exactly. might be your own kid. It doesn't matter. Glare at him anyway, because it's hilarious. <laughs> fucking kids. Stupid fucking <laughs> I'll drown you in the bathtub. <laughs> Detective Pikachu style. Jake needs a D&D roll call. It's Mother's Day tomorrow. Is everyone still planning on playing? My response is, oh, fuck, I forgot it was Mother's Day. <laughs> You're horrible. I think so, you know what? because I we have to end game by noon anyway. So No, we don't, because I don't have to be to work till 1. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, we still have to end the game by noon, but yeah, like, we'll like still... 1230, but we have an extra hour or so. Well, we'll end game probably at the normal time, because I've got to get home early. Well, fuck you, Luke. Well, that's just too bad. The one week I can actually go <laughs> later, and you fuck it up. Hey, we could just say no, because it's Mother's Day. 
I, f- I don't even care. I, I figured. You know, after everything, I don't I don't care. Yeah. Not worried about it. Um, Fucking send a text. <laughs> I, I might not even do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know that's awful, and my parents might even listen to this. I think they understand. At least my dad does, so. Um, not that I give a shit. Yeah. Oh, uh, fuck, I, dude. I, speaking of, I've been, like, debating on what to do with my character, and I think I finally decided switching things up. I, I'm going to stick with Zara. Uh, oh, I'm uh, still, character-wise, just leveling. I mean, yeah. I, I Have we leveled? Did we go to seven? Mm, yes. No, we're six. Okay. I'm going to say, like, I, I, where the fuck was I when we did this thing? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to have to hold on to him now for a little while, because uh, behind the scenes, I worked with Jake to flesh out a little bit more of his story. And it's like, oh, well, now I'm going to have to roll with this, which is fine. Um, oh, pardon me. But there, there, you know, there's there's some things going on that you guys don't know about. <clears throat> which I guess is supposed to be supposed to be that way. There's a lot of things going on that the others don't know about. Um, Apparently. Uh, there's always going to be shit going on. Huh. So, like, I got one last story that I thought was really funny. Uh, an 11-year-old attempted to bribe <laughs> the Prime Minister of, uh, uh, what is this, New Zealand, I think? Uh huh. That sounds yeah. about right. I tried to bribe the prime minister of the New Zealand with five dollars, uh, to get the government to start investigating dragons and psychics. <laughs> A letter from Ard Ardian Arden. A R D E R N Arden Arden. It's New Zealand. They have weird fucking names. I mean, uh, yeah. Written to finish. Uh, written on an official minstrel letterhead and posted to the New Zealand section of the web form Reddit by user Honeybee thanked Victoria for getting in touch. <laughs> That's actually kind of awesome. Yeah, um, sent five bucks. Here, do some research. <laughs> Genetically engineered dragons. It's like, um, I'm I'm pretty sure that's not going to be enough money. Adorable. But thank you for trying. Uh, oh my god. You know what that makes me think of that? Uh, you remember uh, years ago when that, that lady was trying to go around and get money for that 100% science-based dragon raising MMO? <laughs> what? That sounds something I know of. It sounds familiar, but... Oh my god, do you not remember oh that? Oh god, that. I, I think really. it turns out that she she was transgender, and I don't know why that's important, but this is one of the details that I remember. And um, she was trying to get, like, she was showing off concept art and stuff, all sorts of weird shit. Oh, man. And it ended up being not even vaporware, um, just complete it fabrication. Familiar. I just don't, I, the, the dragon scientifically dragon yeah it was it was supposed to be a dragon part it, it was, throws me off it was 100 percent science based mm-hmm. and you were raising dragons and Jesus it was an mmo Christ. and it's like everybody was excited too like everyone was like oh man this is so cool uh, oh dude yeah let's do this like let's have this happen and they were like artists getting in touch with her and stuff like that turned out to be a complete sham <laughs> Like, 100% sham. Like, a Kickstarter that has no merit. Yeah. Which is honestly most Kickstarters. I was just going to say, 90% of Kickstarters? Um, you know, we got some stuff out of Kickstarter. It's not it's not the worst thing ever. But, um, so it's, it's just one of those things that I don't, that just made me think of that 100% science-based MMO on Raising Dragons. Like, you do realize that there are no such things as dragons, right? You You are aware of that. Yes. So I don't know. That was just, that was just something that that popped up into my head when you when you mentioned that. Uh, God. Hey, there's a mod for Fallout Four that turns it into anime. I did see that. Yeah. It's an anime character. It turns your character into an anime character. It's like it's just like yeah. Some of the like you just go back to those fucking Skyrim mods, make like just insanely. Re, like not realism, but just really over the nice top. looking, over the top, uh, over the top animu girls. Yeah, 
Oh shit! I didn't know this happened. I think I do. I have. I just already? found the Reddit post. Uh, dear internet, I'm a 26 year old lady who's been developing a science based 100 percent dragon MMO for the last two years. Yeah, I'm finally making the holy fuck the image for this the 3D work, uh, quote unquote. Jesus God in heaven, it's so hideous. Hey man, here's something that is actually really fucking important. Hmm. Um, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice mod finally replaces the chain Nogra with Shrek. <laughs> yeah, it is important. That is very, that very important. Shrek so it can kick your ass out of his swamp. Get out of my swamp. It, <laughs> this is amazing. Um, God. I, 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 so I have this game, and it's one of those things that I do want to play. Because mm-hmm. it looks really fucking cool. Stealth-based Souls game, basically, I think is what is how it was summed up to me by someone else and um oh Sekiro yeah Sekiro Shadows that twice Mm -hmm. gotta say that whole name I don't know why of course there was also one where someone mods in Thomas the Tank Engine so uh For Honor though added lightsabers for the start for Star Wars Day uh you know For Honor is the uh multiplayer medieval night fighting game and I'm like that is stupid, but cool, and I really want it. Bring it back. Um, which is kind of neat. And that's another one of those fucking games that released, and six months later, it was, oh, our game's actually good now. You should try it. The game's fun now. We swear. Like, no, fuck you. Your game was stupid looking at the beginning. It's going to be dumb now. Oh, my um, God. Why ooh, would you do this? Rage 2 is coming out in a couple days. I just uh, I went ahead and bought it on Steam. I think it comes out. I didn't know we cared about Rage Two. Fuck, dude! It's uh, it's done by ID. It's. I mean, I understand uh, essentially, that, but the the first post-apocalyptic, rage. um, uh, new Doom. I mean, I get that, but the new the the first Rage never. The first Rage was. Pretty I mean, late. it never popped up on my radar. So yeah, I I did play the first Rage. The first Rage's problem wasn't in the gameplay. Yeah, it was that it was way too short of a story. It was just um, short. But Rage 2 looks fucking amazing. It is the only company at, at, at Bethesda that's doing anything worthwhile. And they just need to stop. Bethesda needs to stop making things and just let it do it. Dude, I swear to God, um, Bethesda and EA have literally been going back and forth. Who can be the shittier company? Yeah. And each one telling the other to hold their beer. And going back and forth, and back and forth. Who can do the dumbest shit with their fucking live service garbage ass products? As well as their IPs in general. Yeah, and like, I think um, like fucking one. It's like one week we're finding out that Anthem has deleted uh, or, or has like updated and something that kind of fixed the grind. They've then patched out because they didn't want that and pissed off their fans again. Next week, we find out that Bethesda's fucking plagiarized a Wizards of the Coast official campaign with their, uh, when they came out with their Elsewhere uh, tabletop uh, yeah, campaign. Yeah, yeah. The, the free promotional tabletop role-playing game module set in Elsewhere. Yeah. They sat there and a, they basically copied um, the Black Road. Not not a third-party small indie no, campaign. No. no, no. This is an official Wizards of the Coast released C and D fifth edition. It's part of the it's part of the Adventurers League. A part of the Adventurers League. So it's big shit. People know about it. Part of the Adventurers League adventure. The one of the writers on it, she tweeted Bethesda and was like, "Hey, so uh, you might want to talk to your lawyers about this." Or <laughs> something. I can't remember what she exactly said, but it was so fucking great. Like uh. I can't. I can't, I literally, like, when you and I first, when you first told me about the story and we were texting about it, yeah. my first, my immediate thought was, did they hire a high schooler? Yeah. A lazy high schooler to do this that just went, found something, and then replaced one or two words every few seconds. I mean, basically, that's what he did. I, whoever whoever sat there and wrote this It's the for most them. basic plagiarism. It's literally, like, a middle school plagiarism. Like, basically, yeah, whoever wrote this sat there and... Um, just fucking had a thesaurus opened up and they would go every few sentences just replace like words with 
Well, that means the same thing. It's different. <laughs> the horses were drawing the carriages. The horses pulled the cart. Yeah, like, <laughs> like it's it's one of those things. And I got the I got a copy of the PDF. Yeah, because it's been archived online by Ars Technica. Thank you, Ars Technica. Ars Technica doing the um, Lord's work. <laughs> it, it's one of those things. that's hilarious. It's like, why? Why I would you swear to God? And then and then like then Bethesda does that, and then EA those motherfuckers now have basically admitted that Anthem's dead. That, that their road to whatever the fuck, it's like they've pulled most of those people uh, over to working on the next Dragon Age at Bioware, which is fucking. <laughs> it's just like, oh my god. <laughs> what is wrong with you? You, you got you companies are just so shitty. Oh, dude, <laughs> laughing just, stocks. I just can't. I, I, this, this is hilarious to me. Apparently, it was written by someone named Karim Herbar, um, and it was from our friends over at Bethesda Netherlands. Yeah. So that's where that's where it came from, and you can uh, literally take sentences, Google them, and it will come up with that long mm-hmm. road. And like that's that's just basically they took the black road, black road, sorry, yeah. and uh, just change the change the settings and characters from D and D equivalents to the Elder Scrolls equivalents. Yep. So something like. Uh, the original D&D version mentions a dragonborn servant that gets changed to an Argonian servant. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Uh, the original version has the players fight goblins that gets changed to bandits because bandits are the basic enemy in, in Elder Scrolls. Or as goblins do appear, they're just much later on in, like, the game. Like, they, they pop up in uh, Soul Sign, and they're actually really fucking strong. I think there were goblins in um, Cyrodiil, too, in uh, Oblivion. That's very, very possible, yeah. yeah. Um, the goblins that appear right. in Solus Time are called Ricklings, mm-hmm. and they don't look like a typical goblin, but they're fucking goblins. Mm-hmm. They're, 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 you know, everyone knows a goblin. Everybody That's basically what they end goblin. up being. Like, just little, short bastards. Uh, the Falmer are, could maybe be argued that they're goblins, but no, they're, they're fucking, they're, they're abominations. Nah, they're fucking evil, ugly, nasty, fucking... But Deep yeah, elves. <laughs> it's just one of those things that's kind of funny to me. Like they sat there and they wanted to get into D and D, which is cool. I, I support that, right? Like Elder Scrolls. No, we've talked stuff. about before. Like we're waiting on a like an official yeah Elder Scrolls uh, tabletop. Here it was, yeah, and they fucked it up completely. They they fucked it up. Cue that uh, that uh, Angry Joe. You done you fucked, fucked it, it up. up. <laughs> yeah, like you know, like I how how. That's why they need to get Michael Kirkbride back and just have him write everything. Because he's the one that wrote a majority of everything in the games. Or his writings also inspired a lot of the stuff in the games. A lot of the lore and all that. Mm-hmm. They need to get him back. Like, they to, Come on back, buddy. We'll pay you double. You know? And also, can we stop pretending that Xenomax and Bethesda are separate beings? You know, they are the same entity. They are the same company. Yeah, the Zenimax, like, it's why I don't even bring them up, um, because that's like, that's like the, the corporate, corporate, it's just a, a title, basically. No, it, like they, it's, it's the Umbrella Corporation yeah. for all of Bethesda's holdings, right? Yeah. It's, it's the alphabet to, you know, it's their alphabet, right? Because Google is the company. Yeah. Alphabet is the company that holds all the, all the properties, but it's still Google. Yeah. So, you know, ZeniMax is the same thing. ZeniMax, you know, that's just the umbrella it's why, corporation. It's why any article is going to say Bethesda. Bethesda's yeah. name is going to be on everything. It's so, just... so, so when Bethesda does something stupid, let's not blame ZeniMax. No. Let's yeah. blame Bethesda because they're the same damn thing. If it was ZeniMax coming down and telling them they have to do something, we'd probably know. Except it's not. And it's, because, no, it's not. It, it's not no. going to be because Zenimax isn't going to come down and tell them anything. Because, because Zenimax, there's no, there's nothing there. Yeah. It's, a, it's a show. The shareholders, which I, the shareholders I, might tell Bethesda things, but Bethesda is going to be doing whatever it can to please them anyway. The reason why I just bring like it up, just like EA though, and everyone else. The reason why I bring it up though, because I've defended them in the past. Yeah. So I want to make sure I uh, I make it clear that hey, I was wrong. I'm an idiot. Zenimax and Bethesda are the same fucking company. Yeah. So when Zenimax, you know, with quotes, is, is uh, has made a decision, like to go after teams for using things, 
Uh, like when they went after Notch for the Skulls game, when they went after that uh, one indie studio that was making a game called Pray to the Gods or whatever with P E R or P E Y E P R Y E instead of you know the normal mm-hmm. pray that you would expect. Actually, I don't even think it was spelled like that. Um, I sat there and went after them for that, even though it had nothing to do with pray. Yeah, um, that's all protecting the copyright. Yeah, like that was that was Bethesda being shitty. Yeah, so. I, I wanted to make sure I, I, I said something. There, uh, the only other thing, and I don't want to get into it because we've already gone pretty long anyway. Uh, I don't want to get into it too much. Yeah. The current crazy shit going on because Randy Pitchford can't fucking keep his nose out of drama is once again just fucking hilarious to me. He's one of those people that just causes undue problems yeah. to his own goddamn company. Yep. I fucking have hated the dude since Aliens Colonial Marines lying out of his fucking teeth. Actually goes even further back. Lying out of his teeth about um Duke Nukem Forever. We can't talk about him too much. You might think we have a hard on for I know you might think we have a I'm a hard on for her. No, we don't no, we don't just have a, a hard on for you. You're just a fucking moron. He's a he's a fucking idiot who doesn't know when to quit. Yeah. He doesn't realize that, you know, as the fucking head of this company, maybe if I don't engage in this shit flinging monkey fights on Twitter and <laughs> crap, maybe it might be a good thing for my company's image. I don't know. One of the big things, though, that, that I do have to touch on is no microtransactions. And then oh the game, God, in fact, does have so microtransactions. Goddamn funny. It doesn't matter how you try to describe them. Yeah. If you can spend tiny bits of money for a thing in exchange, it's literally it's fucking microtransactions. The original idea of microtransactions too. Uh-huh. It is like you we, they've been trying so hard to force this other worse bullshit that then now it's like they're trying to go back and be like, "No, this stuff's fine. This is what you're okay with, right? These aren't microtransactions." No, fuck you. That's still microtransactions. That is paid uh micro t- uh content. It's like that's that's the very definition of microtransactions. Micro means small, transaction means money gets exchanged. Yes. This is like, the the original microtransactions was usually cosmetic or weapons yeah, or it doesn't different matter. things like that. It doesn't matter that it's only cosmetic, you yeah. fuck nugget. It's you still a microtransaction. <laughs> it doesn't matter that you're not putting pay to win mechanics in there. Fine, that's fucking great. We yeah. want that. It's still a fucking microtransaction because guess what? Like I just defined it. Yeah. We're giving small amounts of money in exchange for a digital good. It's a fucking microtransaction, you troglodyte. It is not a full DLC. It's it's a microtransaction. That is what that term was created to define, is what what is not a which, um, full downloadable content, what is small, individually packaged content. Which reminds which which brings that me to uh, you see that bill from that Republican senator in yes. Minnesota, I think? He's trying to, to introduce uh, a bill to ban gambling mechanics in games disguised as loot boxes and stuff yep which is i love that the bill is titled something like child child protection act or something like that yeah so that in it it's likely that it'll get voted down but anybody who votes against it is voting against protecting children <laughs> and it's republican of all people you know is like, he a republican I yeah didn't see he's republican yeah it doesn't really surprise me because they're the like we're the first ones well, I actually, I don't know. I think it was bipartisan that were all against the video game industry. I just find it surprising given the direction the Republican Party has pivoted towards recently. Because um, they normally being pro corporate, yeah, being very, very pro corporate and very, very anti consumer, very, very anti American fucking people. I might as well call it out. Um, the funny thing is that yes, one hundred percent pro um, corporations. Yeah. Um, I still have, think that they have the opinion that these video game companies aren't don't like don't belong up there with the other corporations, even though these video game companies make more than most other media companies. I mean, some of these video game companies make more than most countries. So yeah, like we're taught you like you fucking EA and Take Two, uh, like they make un ungodly amounts of money. They are fucking. They're probably make more than wb did yep make more than most of these other like the the, the, um music labels and things like that but i have a feeling that a lot of these senators and stuff until they start getting that money in their pockets until they like ea and whoever are starting to lobby for them um 
they're not even going to, they just, it's like, what? These video games, this is kids shit. Yeah. No. What are you doing? Gambling? Yeah, sure. This is, it's an easy, that's an easy win. Yeah. Like, especially yeah. if you promote it that way of either promoting gambling to children. They're doing what? Because the parents don't know. Yeah, I mean, they how, really don't. Like, how many parents immediately, and how much shit was it when, you know, violence in video games, and how video games yeah, are yeah, making kids Mortal, violent? Original Mortal Kombat. Did, yeah. You know, that, that's where that debate started. And, and Columbine. And it kept going with Columbine, and even yeah. after that, yeah. where it took a hell of a lot of fighting to get them to, you know, understand that, no, they do not cause violence. It's 100% proven that they do not cause violence in people, but... Mm-hmm. I mean, how much temporarily they do, yeah, but <laughs> it might break a controller. Fuck it, god damn it! But um, listen, video games do not cause violence. Man. Lag does. <laughs> Lag causes violence. All right, guys, I think we need to wind it down yeah, there before we it. go off on another huge rant because I could I could bitch about a lot of stuff right now. Yeah. Um, but it might be kind of nice because I still have to go to work today, so. Maybe if I can get like an hour or two nap in, which I don't think I can because I have to somehow edit this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but for the Ungodly Geeks, I was Joe. I was Luke. You guys have a good day. Peace. Fuck yay. Yes.